Hello viewers, my name's Alan and welcome to my workshop. You can probably figure that uh, I've decided to come out, from behind the camera that is. A couple of friends have been suggesting to me for a while that the appearance of a silver-haired talking head can add some credibility. Well, you can be the judge of that. But I've decided it's just not worth the effort of trying to stay out of sight behind the, uh, the camera. Sometimes it's just too hard organising the shots and so on. Just make it easier for me. Um, I don't aspire to video greatness, but I do want to get some stuff out there that's uh, good enough that people are interested to watch it. Um, whether I'm in the picture or not, it doesn't really matter that much to me in the end, at the end of the day. But basically I want to pass on the various, some of the um, tips and tricks and things that I've um, got from uh, my experience in the workshop, particularly with problem solving and coming up with creative solutions rather than going into detailed nitty gritty. There's lots of uh, YouTube videos out there that do that. And uh, I'm, I'm just more interested in focusing on the, uh, the solutions. And particularly uh, my uh, bent is to try to reuse and recycle. So when I do come up with solutions I, and try to map them to a, something I can actually do, my go-to is always to see what I've got lying around or what scrap can be reused and so on. Um, but anyway, enough of that. I'm here. You can see me, for better or for worse. And I want to move on to a, a new project now to do with drill sharpening. This is a bugbear, I think, for lots of people. Probably anyone who's ever tried to drill a hole and found that their drill is a bit blunt. And it's certainly something that I've had many goes at using various bits of kit, but I've yet to come up with a satisfactory solution. And I've decided that 2021 is the year of solving that problem. So I'll be exploring several options. But um, first up, we'll start off with uh, looking at drills and understanding why it's actually so difficult to, uh, to sharpen a drill satisfactorily. So, um, to understand why drill grinding is uh, so hard, I think you first have to understand a little bit about drill geometry. Now, this is, I'm not intending here to do a master class in uh, drill and the way they're made and everything, but you, you, it is worthwhile pointing out several key features. So I'm using a one inch drill here because the, the features look quite large and are easy to see. So there's some obvious things. So there's flutes, two flutes usually. These uh, raised ridges here are margins and they serve to minimize the um, friction when the drill is going down through the material. It contacts in the side of the holes with these things instead of the much larger area which is called the flank. So we've got grooves, margins, flanks. Um, at the business end, we have a point, and this is the, they call this the, the drill angle, or, and it's typically 118 degrees, but certainly not always, and this, you can grind it for different purposes, down to 90 degrees, a very sharp angle if you have a reason to, um, but um, for most workshop purposes you can be happy with 118 degrees. If you do anything, it'd probably be to make it out to more like 135 or something. Uh, the flatter angle would, would then make it bite into um, uh, soft materials less aggressively. Anyway, I'm going to have all of my discussion on the assumption that I'm doing 118 degrees. So there's the drill point. And now what you'll see also is that there are two cutting lips. One and two one and two. Now these lips of course present a sharp edge which does the business. But they can only cut if there's actually a, a clearance angle behind them. So you can see uh, here that's the cutting edge but the, the um, material in the, the flank is backed off here as you get move away from the cutting edge and that uh, angle that's uh, included there is the clearance angle and you have to have that clearance behind the cutting edge otherwise the cutting edge can't uh, dig into the work and it's um, doing that creating that clearance angle really that causes all the grief because if you look at it it's, it's a fairly complicated shape it, it wraps around in a, in a cone shape but also falls off towards the back the last feature that's worth pointing out is the chisel point because the, um, the grind has to back away around there and on the other side, 
it's not possible for these two edges to meet as a, a point. Um, so you finish up with this piece here, um, which is they call the chisel. And the, the chisel is uh, something you can't uh, get away from with what's called a conical grind, which is what we're talking about here. But the chisel is a nuisance to you because it doesn't actually drill. And so when you're trying to make a hole, you have to put pressure on to basically push that into the work and it pushes material out the way and then the cutting uh, edges come into play and can start exerting a bit of force to actually pull the drill in and offset the effort required to push that a little bit. But the, the chisel point is a consequence of another feature which I forgot to mention earlier which is basically the web. And the web is the material that um, is on the centre line um, between the two flutes. And <clears throat> excuse me, typically, when the, the way they construct the drills, the web actually gets thicker towards the um, back end of the drill. And it's just a structural thing. I mean, obviously back here it's immensely thick, but it tends to get thicker as you go back. And the, an issue that that creates for you is as you sharpen the drill and re reduce its length, you're going further back into the thicker web material. So this um, chisel point here becomes longer and more of a nuisance. And that's one of the issues with using this uh, conical um, grinding method that is most uh, common. Anyway, that's the covered the uh, the key pieces of the drill, and so when you're sharpening it uh, using a traditional um, conical method, the idea is to get the edge and then have the back off angle behind it, which leaves you with the chisel and those issues. But there is another way to sharpen them, which has become uh, come to the fore in recent times, and that's called four facet drill sharpening. So we'll certainly be talking about that as well. And the, and the pros and cons of that. But there is, just before we get off the uh, conical grind and uh, start talking about the uh, four facet grind, there is one other thing which I could point out. Using this uh, even larger drill as an example, this guy's um, an inch and five eighths, so pretty worthwhile beast. This has got a conical grind on it. I'll get it into the camera. So you can see this, the same deal. Um, we've got our cutting, let's move him out of the way. We've got our cutting lip and it's backed off around. But the web would be very thick. So what's been done in this case, uh, in a technique called thinning the web, is in fact to grind a bit off the back here so that at the drill point where the chisel would be, even though it's a, a really large drill, because of the, the um, thinning here and symmetrically on this side, um, the chisel point is actually really quite small because it's been thinned out. Um, so that's a technique that can be used in uh, cases of a, a really wide web to uh, um, improve things a bit. Now I thought it might be a bit interesting just in passing to point out that uh, you don't always have um, um, two flutes. In the case of this drill, you'll see it's actually got four flutes. And it's a very good, uh, it serves to give a very good illustration of the web. So you can see here, in the, this is obviously designed for enlarging uh, holes. I mean, it, you can't plunge a drill like this directly into work, but if you've got an existing pilot hole, you can use it. And a um, uh, very tough drill. But anyway, the point is, it shows the, uh, the web very clearly. So I've spoken about a four facet um, method of sharpening drills. So what does that actually mean? You can see, perhaps you can see here, one of the, the facets and behind it, another separate one. So there's two of them. If we turn the drill around, of course, the pattern's repeated on the other side. So what's going on here? Well, first up, the 
uh, the lip, the cutting edge, has been formed by a flat grinding operation that creates a, a flat surface there with that front edge. Now, as we know, um, you've got to have back off or clearance angle. Well, that's been achieved by putting a separate flat grind behind it. So there's two, instead of trying to do it as a continuing curve around, there's a flat and a flat repeated on the other side, so hence the four facets. And the key advantage of this method is a, well, two actually, it's much simpler to grind it, but critically, instead of having um, a chisel point, you can finish up when it's done properly with the drill actually coming to a point there. Hopefully that the camera is picking that up. But you actually have a point. And the key advantage of that mean, is that the drill will be self-centering when you try and start it on a piece of work. So instead of um, the chisel point, which tries to walk about and not go where you want it to go, this point will locate exactly on a, say, um, um, a centre pop mark or, or possibly even without it, and the drill doesn't walk or wander. So much easier to achieve this sharpening pattern and a key benefit of self-centering. And also, uh, because the chisel is missing, the effort required to press or feed the drill into the work is greatly reduced. And as a consequence of that, there's less heat produced and it uh, seems to be a win-win all round. Um, I haven't yet uh, done any uh, real work with these things, so I can't talk from personal experience. But I, I, I believe that they um, cut a lot easier. And I've also read that, uh, unfortunately, the way that they're ground leaves this edge a bit vulnerable um, with less uh, material supporting it. So they are a little bit, apparently, a little bit more prone to chip and so on. But I don't have the experience yet to know whether that's actually true. So I'll be looking in a bit more detail at both of the methods because um, I want to make a, a drill grinding attachment for my AR5 tool and cutter grinder. I was planning to duplicate the design of a sharpening jig that was um, um, an accessory, an originally supplied accessory for the uh, tool and cutter grinder. But um, And I've got some uh, pictures and some information that was kindly made available by another YouTuber, so that might be a possibility. Um, so I could go down the path with that, but that um, sharpening jig is actually relatively sophisticated and has a couple of very specific um, adjustments on it which uh, to replicate on um, uh, a clone that I might make would need fairly exacting uh, measurements because they're talking about making really quite fine adjustments and if you don't get the, uh, the proportions of the device correct then the adjustments aren't going to, just aren't going to have the right result. Um, but the promise of the four facet uh, grinding is uh, that the, the sharpening jig is relatively simple to make, relatively. So that's really looking like the more attractive, and, and especially considering some of the advantages that I've already mentioned, that's looking like the more attractive option just at the moment. But come on the journey with me, we'll uh, check these uh, options out and see which one uh, makes it to the top of the queue. Okay, well let's uh, start having a look at some of the uh, things I've used in the past to try and help me get a, a reasonable result sharpening drills. Um, so first up was this guy here, which is uh, an attachment for a, a drill, cordless or otherwise. It uh, clamps on the boss behind the chuck there. And uh, it's a bit difficult to get a good picture of this, but perhaps you can see that there's... Um, set of holes around the top here. Each one's nominated for the size of a drill and um, down in the bottom of the, the holes there are a pair of little uh, dogs that stick out which are supposed to um, engage the, um, the edges of the lips. Um, if I turn the uh, grindstone by hand here you can possibly see at the bottom of the hole that it's uh, rotating around and it's a profiled stone, so once it's worn out of shape, that's it. It's no good for anything. But I find, found using it on a number of occasions that um, you can't, or I couldn't at least, um, um, 
I couldn't at least uh, get repeatability in how I put the drill into the, uh, the thing. And as a result, we finished up with um, um, multifaceted, very poorly shaped tips. So for me, this thing was, uh, was useless. I'm not interested in uh, having any more to do with it. Uh, that's that one. Okay, let's move on and look at a uh, second attempt at uh, getting something uh, worthwhile for sharpening drills. The Drill Doctor. Uh, get a <coughs> better look at the picture of the thing probably from looking at the box. This thing comes in three flavours. One for every budget, they say. So the entry level one, which isn't cheap, is $249. Then the middle ranked one, their um, 500X, is uh, a rather ex more expensive, 479 And then the one they call their trade or top line one, the uh, 750X, is uh, nearly 580 That's Australian dollars. Now for that sort of money, you're expecting a pretty serious tool. Yeah, well, I'm not sure I got one. Let's have a closer look. So the basic idea is it uh, comes with a, a chuck um, and the idea is you put your drill in the chuck, just loosely tighten it like that and you stick it in the, simplifying this a little bit, you stick it in the hole there, open, let's move this over a little bit. Open that up, push the drill in, and rotate it around until these uh, claws uh, grab it and uh, align it. With this model, there's a knob that you can play with as well, which uh, changes the amount of stick out of the drill. And I haven't found it to be make a great deal of difference to me, but let's set it on the middle position. So push the drill in and they tell you to tighten it up a little bit. Take the chuck out, sharpen the drill firmly and then you're ready to go. Um, so I'll plug it in. So the idea is you put your drill in and um, there's uh, cams on each side of this thing, so when you rotate it, it uh, has a rocking up and down, or round and round sort, sort of motion. Oh, easier just to do it, you'll get the idea probably. So that's done, one grind each on the two flutes. Hasn't done anything useful yet, so we'll repeat. So do the same number of uh, things on each uh, side. Let's see what we've got now. Well, I can't say I'm overly impressed. Might um, stick it out a, a bit more. And uh, have another go. I mean, in fairness to it, the drill that I was giving it to do, uh, in fairness to it, the drill I was giving it to uh, to tackle um, had been butchered by the other um, sharpening thing. So anyway, oh, so we'll take that out, loosen the chuck off again. Push 
put it in, open that, snug the chuck up, take it out, do it up tight, back in the hole here, and go again. So let's have a proper look under um, with some serious magnification and see what it looks like. So, in fairness, the uh, Drill Doctor can do a reasonable job, um, but I haven't found it to be entirely consistent. So with the drill of the ground today, it came up with a reasonable result. Uh, certainly not perfect, but it would, it would drill a hole. But the, there's a couple of limitations that I can't get past with the Drill Doctor. One is that it can't handle um, drills with a Morse taper. And my sister's is a really big one. I do have a number of them, probably about 40 drills with Morse taper, and this just can't deal with that. Also, uh, and the reason I bought the, the 750, um, the DD750X, is that it, it, uh, it, out of the three of the drill doctors, it can actually take the largest drill. It will take up to a three quarter inch parallel um, flute um, drill, which is something. Um, but overall it's just not a complete solution for me um, and as I said the drill I did today came out all right but that certainly isn't always the case for me so on to something else next thing is uh, um, this sort of jig they're pretty common and um, if you look closely you can see that they have uh, degree readings um, 88 through 41 and the most commonly used um, drill grinding angle is 118 half of that being the 59 so the, the way these guys work you um, clamp them on the bench next to a, a grindstone and um, swipe them backwards and forwards wiping the face of the drill um, across the face of the grindstone Um, in this format it doesn't provide very much in the way of uh, um, fine adjustment for doing the sharpening and um, certainly one of the issues is with this sort of jig is getting um, some appropriate clearance angle let's use the bigger drill to get uh, some of this uh, clearance angle. What tends to happen with this style of jig is that you finish up with um, either zero clearance or even worse positive so that the it's the back edge of the flute that uh, touches the, um, the work not the cutting edge. Also in this implementation typically the shaft is, um, is vertical not inclined at all and uh, the correct, um, the original design for this thing dates back to about 1910 or something actually. A bloke called Van Royen did a whole lot of work and came up with a, a mathematically proven model why this sort of thing can work, but only if that's leaning forwards and um, the drill center line is off to one side of the, the vertical post, etc. Some challenges like that. And these simple imp implementations just don't uh, allow for that. Even so, um, using them carefully, you can get a, a reasonable result. But my issue is that uh, I've got to be able to, in my workshop, d 
do large drills as, as well as the, uh, the smaller ones, so it just doesn't get there. So the basic concept might be alright, but basically what it's doing is what's called conical point grinding. Um, as you can see, the, the, the sharpening goes around and down. Um, so I'm inclined, to, oh, and this basic idea is what was embodied in the um, drill sharpening jig that was originally uh, an option or supplied with my AR5 tool and cutter grinder. So I've got it in mind to um, make the uh, room a clone of what they would have supplied with that. And that clone does have this extra sophistication of the leaning angle here and being able to offset sideways, etc. But I'll do some drill sharpening with this guy and show you what's possible with it. Um, so that'll get us started. We'll move on to doing something with this. And then after that, I'll have a look at uh, the, the mechanics of doing the, the four facet sharpening. Alright, so uh, first thing we've got to do in setting up to um, uh, use that uh, drill grinding jig is to um, get a stone set up and, uh, and face the stone. So I'm going to be doing that using the, the AR5. Um, the, you're supposed to have, or it, it was supposed to have a um, a block that held um, a diamond grinding point. I haven't got that, so I do have a diamond grinding point, and I've uh, dismounted it in this universal holder to get the job done. And I'll get the uh, the face of this stone flat um, with no run out. So that's what we'll do first. Have a look at that. It's looking pretty good. We call that done. So now I can mount the uh, the drill sharpening jig and um, get cracking. Okay, this isn't the most scientific setup, but hopefully uh, it'll illustrate a key point. I've tried to set the edge of the square on the centre line of the vertical pivot shaft to highlight that um, the way the drill is held in a V is actually offset to one side of the center line of the vertical shaft and that's a quarter inch drill so it's actually offset by about an eighth of an inch to one side. Now that offset is critical to establishing the uh, clearance angle behind the lip of the drill and because this simple geometry doesn't allow that to be adjusted it means that um, you, when you're grinding, grinding a small uh, drill you tend to get large clearance angles and when you are grinding a, a large drill you tend to get small clearance angles. You can adjust and fluff around a bit by changing the extension of the drill from the jig or indeed by propping the back of the jig up. But um, it's an inherent limitation of the guide. Um, I'll try and show it by drilling one, uh, grinding one small drill and one large drill with the recommended stick outs and we'll see if we can see what I'm talking about see if I can demonstrate what I'm talking about okay now I apologize for the fan noise in the background but it's quite warm here so I'm sorry I've got to have the fan on we set it up so that the uh, drill tip is sticking out by one diameter and that's the the maths that I've seen uh, dating back to Van Royen in the 1913 or 1912 or something. Anyway, so there we are sticking out by yep, by 3 sixteenths. That's good. This top piece here is broken unfortunately. It's going to crack off across here. But never mind. So I took this little nib thing off so you could see what was going on. And I put the screws back to hold that on.
so it just catches the lip of the drill and we can see or you can see we've got a problem straight away because with that at its lowest position I can't set the drill um, if, I set, if I try to grind it at that what's going to happen is it will grind the, the nib here so I have to have it sticking out a bit further than the recommended amount and I'll do the, the smallest amount of extra that I can get away with so that's good to go so then what we do is move the move this over a little bit to about somewhere there maybe I've, I've set this below the diameter of the, the centre line of the wheel in the hope that the grinding angle, or the angle of the grip going past the, the drill will cause the um, grinding pattern or the, the roughness to be away from the edge of the lip rather than parallel to it hoping that that will um, result in a slightly stronger lip anyway let's start it up and see how we go So look at the drill point and see what progress we're making. Well, we certainly seem to be getting plenty of clearance angle. And press on, a couple more goes. I'll go and put this under a magnifier in a little while and we can see a bit more clearly what sort of a job it's done but it looks to me like uh, as expected it's put a very large relief angle on that small drill M much more than is wanted really and you can see this excess clearance in the drill on the left the one on the right I uh, ground after making a modified uh, nib so that the um, I could have a bit more a bit less stick out and here you can see the one ground with less um, uh, rake compared to a brand new drill. And see that the back rake or clearance is pretty much the same. Okay, let's have a go at setting up with the 7 16th of an inch drill. So I've set the tab here to catch the nib. So now I've got to set the uh, thing out 7 16 11 millimeters as close as makes no difference. Well, we've got the calipers set now. It's out of the way. All right, and we'll turn it on. Move in till we touch. All right, another side. Okay, so now we'll start going in a bit. Check, have a look, see what's happening. So it's uh, grinding on the back of the heel here. It doesn't look like it's miles off. It looks like it's going to be give us a pretty flat um, relief angle, which is what I was expecting. That will carry on. And I think the, uh, I can get, my eyes aren't that great, but I can just see, I think. A little tiny bit that hasn't, oh it's getting a bit warm now, hasn't quite got it so I think we just need a, a slight touch more. I think we'll call that it. And we've got our grind all the way around but the relief angle is flatter I think than it should be um, which is the issue with this style of, of um, jig 
so there isn't any way to uh, adjust the uh, the uh, offset from the centre line of the pivot. Well, I might go and drill some holes with these and these two drills that we've just sharpened. And whilst they uh, showcase the limitations of the jig, they probably do still drill holes. So let's go and check them out. Okay, so we'll start with a small drill. And give that a bit of speed. Go with that 1500, something like that. Oh, yeah, maybe 1200, something like that. Bit of this. Alright, let's see how we go. Well, I didn't have any trouble getting through the metal. Neat enough hole, so. Uh, we might check that out with a hole gauge afterwards and see whether it, uh, how far off being on size it is. Okay. We'll use that as a pilot for the big fella that we've just done. So I don't usually drill Actually, those, uh, those lips are very sharp. I think I might just um, hone them by um, drilling um, into the end grain of a block of wood just to polish the rough bits off. It doesn't put any stress on and um, polishes the, uh, the edge. It's a tip my dad gave me years ago. Yes, that feels better. They just <laughs> they just feel like knives now. They're quite smooth. Killed and cut myself actually. All right. So we set a speed down to oh, a couple of hundred. Or, yeah, a couple of hundred maybe something like that. There's the juice. And we'll see how that goes. Make sure that's not in the way. That's not a good start. Well, what's that done to the ends of my drill? Yes, it's broken the edges up. So we might just, see we've got the drilled grinding jig set up, we might just touch that up and come back and try again. All right, that's got us back to um, an undamaged end. So this time we might try doing the hole without a pilot and see how we go. Let's inspect the end. Well, that looks, no, both lips still look pretty good actually. So I guess it means that um, they're just not quite symmetrical. Well, given the cheap, I mean, drill jig, I suppose we can't be too surprised at that. But anyway, it's done a reasonable job, but uh, there isn't as much um, clearance angle there as would be good. But clearly there's enough. So let's have a closer look at the uh, tip of the 716th drill and this is a um, video taken after it had drilled its hole and we'll have a quick look at the inside of the hole as well to see what sort of a surface finish we've got in, in the hole. 
So as you can see, the cutting lip stood up pretty well, and I was quite pleased with the, um, the surface finish in the hole. And I did use the hole gauge on it and check the size, and it came out to about 0.1 of a millimetre oversize. Okay, well I decided to call a halt here with the uh, conical grinding jig, getting a reasonable finish, which is good for the grinding stones, I guess, in the machine. But I think the the limits of that jig are all too obvious. So I'm not going to do any more with that. I'm going to move on to having a look at the um, four facet um, grinding method and uh, see what sense I can make of that.